السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وأسعد الله صباحكم جميعا نرحب بكم في الفترة الثانية من اليوم الثاني للمؤتمر والفعاليات آه هذه الجلسة التي تحمل وسائل التواصل الاجتماعي والأزمة آه الخليجية آه سوف يتم الحديث في النطاق وسائل التواصل الاجتماعي حقيقة وقبل أن نبدأ بالمشاركين ونحن ربما تعقد القمة الثامنة والثلاثين بعد غد بشقيقة الكويت العلاقات الخليجية الخليجية في المجمل منذ 81 حتى هذه اللحظة لم تكن على الدوام على ما يرام طوال هذه الفترة ربما السنوات الأولى عندما انشغل المجلس في مواجهة الأخطار التي أنشئ من أجلها آنذاك في 81 إلى الغزو الغاشم الذي تعرضت له شقيقة الكويت ربما كان هادئا أنا ذاك لكن تاليا حدثت مناوشات واشتباكات سياسية واشتباكات عسكرية أيضا بين الأشقاء في دول مجلس التعاون الخليجي لكن في كل أو في يعني كل ما حدث من هذه المناوشات والاشتباكات لم تنزلق العلاقات الخليجية الخليجية إلى ما وصلت إليه اليوم من وصول إلى مرحلة جدا صعبة في العلاقات التي تشهدها اليوم المنظومة الخليجية هذا بالطبع أيضا انعكس على الصعيد الإعلامي الإعلام للأسف أنه أصبح مرآة لما تتعرض له السياسة الخليجية اليوم من إرباك ومن ارتباك ومن مناوشات وصلت إلى ما وصلت إليه كما تعلمون الخطاب الإعلامي طوال هذه السنوات أيضا لم يكن بهذه المستوى ولم يصل اللغة الخطابية أو التطاول على الرموز والأعراض واستخدام كل الأدوات الممكنة وكسر كل المحرمات المتعارف عليها في النطاق الخليجي وما بين الأسر الخليجية لم يكن يوما ما وصل إلى هذه المرحلة اليوم وصلنا ربما إلى مرحلة وانزلاق ونفق مظلم جدا في هذه العلاقات الخليجية أيضا ربما ليس فقط قد أنا ذاك البعض يقول أنه لم تكن هناك وسائل إعلامية وشبكات تواصل ما هي عليه اليوم وليست القدرة الإعلامية أنا ذاك كما هي الحال عليه اليوم في هذه الجلسة جلسة ال التواصل الاجتماعي والأزمة الخليجية ومن خلال المشاركين في هذه الجلسة سوف يتم تسليط الضوء على الإعلام بشبكات التواصل الاجتماعي كيف تناول هذه الأزمة خاصة أن هذه الأزمة بدأت بكونها أزمة إعلامية عندما تم اختراق وكالة الأنباء القطرية وقرصنة الموقع وبالتالي بدأت قبل أن يبدأ الحصار وتبدأ الأزمة فعليا بين الدول كان هناك أزمة إعلامية قد بدأت باختراق وكالة الأنباء القطرية ما هي الأدوار التي لعبتها شبكات التواصل الاجتماعي خلال هذه الأزمة وكيف وجهت هذه الوسائل للعب دور هدام يشعل الأزمة الخليجية هل أزمة الخليج هي أزمة هاشتاقات و التصعيد على الصعيد الاعلامي تويتر فيسبوك كل ما يتعلق بشبكات التواصل الاجتماعي كل هذه التساؤلات سوف نجد لها اجابات من خلال الطروحات التي سوف نستمع اليها من كل من من الاستاذه مريم الخاطر الاستاذ عبد الرحمن الشامي الاستاذين اندرو ليبرو والكسي ابراهام نبدا بدايه مع الاستاذه آه مريم آه الخاطر التي آه في التعريف المختصر جدا جدا عنها هي باحثة ما بعد الدكتوراه في الجامعة الوطنية الأسترالية وهي متخصصة في موضوع تأثير الإعلام الجديد في النزاعات والتحولات السياسية في منطقة الخليج شغلت سابقا منصب نائب المدير العام لمركز الدوحة لحرية الإعلام وهي أيضا كاتبة ومستشارة إعلامية وعضو في اللجنة الوطنية لتحالف الحضارات وكانت سابقا عضو مجلس إدارة شبكة الجزيرة الفضائية ومجلس إدارة قناة الجزيرة للأطفال وعضو اللجنة الدائمة للانتخابات حاصر على درجة الماجستير في الإعلام من الجامعة الأمريكية واشنطن دي سي متخصصة في قضايا الإعلام والعلاقات الدولية كاتبة عمود صحفي أسبوعي عنوانه مداد القلم في جريدة الشرق القطرية 
وانها لجاء المراه المثاليه في الصحافه القطريه لعام 96 ولها مساهمات متعدده في وسائل الاعلام المحليه والخارجيه الاستاذه مريم سوف تتحدث عن البروباغندا الاعلاميه والتجيش الالكتروني في الازمه الخليجيه لديها دراسه حاله في تويتر طبعا تستعرض من خلالها الازمه الخليجيه في كل مراحلها التي تعرضت لها منذ ايامها بالارقام والاحصاءات تفضلي الاستاذه مريم ولك 20 دقيقه بالتمام والكمال استاذنك في الحديث من المنصه نظرا لانني عندي لدي عرض بالنسب والاحصاءات ولكن اشكرك على هذه المقدمه واود ان انوه شكري للمركز العربي الذي اعطاني درجه الاستاذيه فانا باحثه دكتوراه فقط اريد ان اوضح باحثه دكتوراه و سأنتظر بإذن الله بعد الجلسة نحصل على ما بعد الدكتورة الفخرية من المركز ما دام وضعوها لي شكرا بروباغندا والتجيش الإلكتروني في الأزمة الخليجية فقط اسمحوا لي أن أرحب بكم وأن أن أتحدث اليوم عن البروباغندا والجيوش الإلكترونية التي تجيش على وسائل التواصل الاجتماعي سأتحدث في هذا العرض اليوم عن أهدافه البروباغندا منظور إعلامي حربي التصور المفاهيمي للبحث الذي سيضع الإطار من حيث المفهوم والآلية ثم ستحدث عن استراتيجية الإرهاب كوسم استخدم في هذه الحملة وأركسترا البروباغندا لدول الحصار التي اتبعتها لشيطنة دولة قطر ثم سأتحدث عن البروباغندا أيضا كأوركسترا معزوفة على وسائل التواصل الاجتماعي وسأخص على وجه الخصوص حرب الوسوم والهاشتاج على تويتر او الهاشتاج على تويتر في الخليج بين ازمتين عام 2014 وعام 2017 ثم ثم ساتحدث عن البروباغندا الهاشتاج والجيوش الالكترونيه المنشاه على تويتر بين ازمتين ازمه 2014 ومن ثم 17 دعوني اتحدث من خلال مفهوم محدد ما الذي حرك الحرب انا ساركز على مفهومين تطبيق مفهوم جوبلز في النازية الدعاية المستخدمة في الحروب وهي أن صياغة الأخبار هي سياسة الحرب وهدفها ليس إعطاء معلومات بل إشعال فتيلة حرب أو أزمة وهذا ما حدث بافتعال جريمة القرصنة ومن ثم فبركة تصريحات سميت عبر تويتر بهاشتاج تصريحات تميم وسيأتي ذكرها وهي متمثلة في القرصنة إذا بدأت الأزمة الحالية ل 2017 بافتعال جريمة القرصنة ثم أهمية الأخبار تكمن فيما أطلق عليه مؤسس البي بي سي أيضا وهو إخبار يختلف عن وزير الدعاية النازية جوبس عندما قال أن الأخبار تمثل للدعاية الحربية قوات الصدمة التصور المفاهيم يتحدث عن مفهوم جوبس في اكذب حتى يصدقك الناس والعرض لديكم هو لرسامة قطرية عرضت الفيك نيوز الأزمة نشر الأخبار المفبركة التصور المفاهيمي أيضا يعتمد على مفهوم آخر في آلية واستراتيجية الحملة المتبعة من قبل دول campaign a campaign similar to the Israeli project of 2009 and we can see similarities the Israeli project of the global language dictionary we'll see similar definitions when the Israeli occupation tries to lay down some 25 different rules within the project. Mizrahi, the leader of this project, uh, called it like the, the rules of uh, winning the hearts and minds of... Uh, and uh, this was a secret project which was not exposed except through some leaks to the media. And we also have the Lance rules of hiding facts and 
and uh, how the Israelis used similar similar uh, mechanisms. Uh, for example, the Israelis turned the, or shifted the focus from occupation and territory into terrorism or fighting terrorism. And now we see a similar thing in this crisis when, uh, and similar to what President Bush uh, has uh, said. Uh, and Lan says, uh, it's, it doesn't matter what you say, but what people hear basically through different uh, platforms, whether audio, visual, or others, to take a definition from a dictionary like the term terrorism, for example, and uh, float it around. What will be the median used? Before, before uh, you start this campaign, you first of all close down all the media channels of communication belonging to the other side so that your own citizens will not hear anything but what you want them to hear. And for this reason, they blocked Al Jazeera before the hacking and not after hacking, and we have proof of this. Then the blockading country started blocking Al Jazeera and other Qatari news, uh, news sites. And at the same time, legislation were issued in these countries to criminalize any acts of sympathy with the Qatar. And I'll, I'll be very quick in this. You, you need to pay close attention here to the repetition of the word terrorism and even religious discourse now by the imam of the holy shrines used the word terrorism and accused Qatar of supporting terrorism. And at the same time, of course, any opponents of this idea was ex excluded. They even resorted to songs and also used, uh, for example, uh, and they also the campaign of uh, hate reached uh, the arena of sporting activities. They used lobbies and pressure groups. And from 2012, and Britain, in fact, from 2010. And today, what we see is a culmination of efforts. And secondly, now we get to the propaganda of hashtags, which is the practical side, and we will try and give some uh, statistics as to what happened between the years 2014 and 2017, and also how Qatar was labeled as a country supporting terrorism. And this war of uh, hashtags on Twitter, and also in the year 2014, then in the prelude, the period just before the night of the hacking on in on May in May of uh, this year 2017, if we go to Twitter, we will see some interesting uh, statistics. For example, uh, the Gulf area is one of the most penetrated areas, and you see from the chart here that the first comes uh, Saudi Arabia, followed by the rest of uh, the Gulf countries. So who started this? Was it the hacking, the act of hacking, which triggered this war of hashtags? Or was there preparation before that to proceed, before the hacking took place? 
I analyzed a sample. Uh, I use that, uh, I intend to use that for my PhD thesis. I use the API Decahoos, which, uh, which uh, constitutes 10% of the fire hose on Twitter. And I uh, monitored some active hashtags from February until the Islamic American summit, which was held in Riyadh. I collected 20 million tweets, uh, sorry, 2 million tweets, and I filtered that from spam and others until I reached 330,000, and I classified them into two groups, a group uh, supporting withdrawing the ambassadors and a group which is not. And this is very important to understand. We know the most important hashtag or trend was withdrawing ambassadors in 2014. But let us go to the end of that crisis at that time when when the the arab foreign ministers held a meeting in jeddah and zayani has declared then that the crisis of withdrawing ambassadors is over and it's only a matter of time and getting all the preparations and the way for the ambassadors to return and the and the, the hashtags on Twitter at that time focusing on, on, on the fact that the terror threat so far as Gulf countries are concerned comes from ISIS from the north and the Houthis from the house, south. And of course we must recognize the great efforts exerted by His Highness the Emir of Kuwait at that time to solve this crisis. But uh, the active, the, uh, the, the activists uh, who are pro the unity of the Gulf countries could not manage to get a hashtag to be influential. Now, please refer back to the end of August, when at the end of August, new hashtags Bidayat began to appear, all in the same, going in the same direction. Qatar is the mother of terrorism. Qatar supports terrorism. So there was someone somewhere trying to label Qatar Qatar as a supporter of terrorism. This leads me to conclude that there are electronic armies who are working day and night and they are inciting for hatred between our countries. And you see from this slide, in this pie chart, the group uh, supporting withdrawing ambassador in the sample I studied uh, was around 40%. 30% of all accounts who supported withdrawing ambassadors are electronic armies paid for or bought for, uh, but uh, on the other side, 22 were real activists and 4% uh, were uh, electronic armies, as they call them, which are run probably by governments or other institutions. And uh, if we take this level at 30%, this is very high and this is uh, a very important message we can read in the, the hashtag supporting withdrawing the ambassadors in 2014, 2014. Even the new study which uh, 
And I try to study all the different hashtags and tweets in the period leading up to the hacking of the Qatari news agency. I studied some 52,000 almost tweets and uh, in, through collaboration with the QCIR Qatar to see whether or not these accounts were colluding with the hacking or not, this uh, chart uh, shows you that uh, the highest hash fa followed hashtags, we will see the trends, the highest trends, uh, the ones you see on this chart. These are for all the users. And then, uh, then we uh, exclude the, the hashtag entitled Tamim's statements because it was the highest trend. Also, we tried to monitor the so-called electronic army. We will see clearly how they were trying to uh, market this trend. And, uh, and also in the period from 15 to the 31st of May, uh, the study shows that around 5,000 uh, accounts uh, that they are electronic armies. Maybe it's higher, but uh, we need other mechanisms to prove that. And if we, if there was one campaign by certain identified individuals against Qatar, but at the same time there were other campaigns emanating, one like, uh, one was emanating from Egypt, coup d'etat in Qatar was originated in Egypt, and, uh, and the traffic was coming from Egypt. There was another campaign in, in, in the Gulf also aimed against the Emir of Qatar. Were these sites uh, colluded in the act of hacking uh, with the, uh, the hacking of the Qatari news agency or not, it became apparent to me later on that from the creation date it shows that this is another mechanism of computational sociology and computer science shows that the accounts were created specifically to vilify Qatar, and I'll tell you the exact dates. The excluding accounts, you will see in this chart, monitoring of the accounts, 51 accounts were created on daily basis between February till 31st of May, but suddenly there was a huge jump on the 5th of May. As you see this peak, 757 or 775 uh, uh, accounts were created on that day. And this was only four days before the hacking itself. This new uh, and uh, accounts all colluding and collaborating with the hacking, and we used some keywords, and we we could conclude conclude that. And when we tested all these uh, 
accounts and we did that in collusion with the Qatar Institute for Computer Studies and we they are either automated or spam or 60% of them really were from the dates of creation uh, we concluded that they are spam or then, so the only thing which remains now to talk about is the night of the hacking on the 24th of May 2017. The first news item uh, uh, the, 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 there was breaking news on the Al Arabiya on, on Twitter within five minutes, uh, and you will see in the archives. I I learned that from the API on the on the 23rd of May, according to the time zone of the West Coast in the United States, the hacking took place on uh, exactly on uh, 12, uh, 13 or 14 after midnight, and within five minutes, the Twitter account of Al Arabiya came out with this breaking news. The second source was the, the, the channel, the Saudi channel al Akhbariya, But it was the very channel, the very source for the Tamim statements. Hashtag on the, after 23 minutes, came another hashtag on, on Qatar's relations with Israel and then the Tamim statements, uh, both hashtags were created within this short period of time. And this is one of the, this is one of the accounts. It, I don't know how, that we th they say it's Saudi, but we don't know where the origin uh, I don't know. I don't know whether this is Emirati or Saudi because uh, this this they say this is uh, Saudi of Emirati origin. On the night of the crime of hacking itself, the the hashtag. The highest trend on uh, the Tamim statements. I'm not accusing anybody of anything, but we, we clearly see that the first accounts which uh, really engaged actively in supporting the, the Tamim statement hashtag and we we'll see. Thank you very much. And uh, we, we, we hope that uh, we learn the lesson and I hope that we Arabs can heed the lessons we learn, we learn from this little bluebird how it can be used to cause uh, friction and discord and problems, but we remember what the Arab poet Al-Mutanabbi said, people should be more insightful and use not just your eyesight, but your knowledge and analysis to in sorting out problems. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Ms. Maryam, for this presentation and also respecting the time limit. And this is very nice effort, in fact. And, and new crises uh, she covered many uh, issues and uh, she uh, quoted many sayings and uh, proverbs and finally uh, 
to the talking about hashtags, accounts, and what uh, have uh, followed. The second uh, uh, paper that uh, which will be presented uh, by uh, Andrew Lieber. He is a PhD uh, student at Harvard uh, University. His uh, searching uh, based on uh, lack of uh, uh, equality in the Middle East, and his thesis uh, is uh, uh, dealing uh, with the uh, uh, statistics of the uh, public opinion and uh, oral uh, history of the reason uh, for uh, non-democratic uh, uh, governments uh, to in certain uh, areas uh, and uh, he um, occupied the uh, also, we have Alexei Abrahams. Uh, he's a researcher in the NIP House for Globalization and Governance in Princeton. Um, and he's a researcher. Um, uh, and he has PhD in economics uh, from Brown in 2015. And uh, he is a member of uh, ASOC. And he was a previous year a search fellow at the Middle East Initiative, Harvard uh, 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 Harvard uh, Kennedy School uh, in uh, San Diego, and he's uh, a consultant advisor for the Asia Development Bank and World Bank. And uh, both uh, colleagues will be discussing uh, social medias and the hegemony of uh, uh, hegemony of uh, um, of. Um, Dilemma of media objectivity, yes. Authoritarian, so they will be discussing social media and uh, authoritarian thought uh, hegemony evidence from so the Gulf crisis. Uh, we'll be giving the lecture in uh, in English, uh, uh, but we would like uh, to welcome questions in any language uh, and uh, meaning Arabic and English. We would like uh, to thank uh, the Arab Center uh, for uh, this opportunity. So I'll, I'll begin and then uh, Andrew will, will take over a little bit after. Uh, this is this is preliminary work, so we really welcome uh, questions and comments. Um, we're very excited about where this where this project is going. Um, our third author, Melanie Kemet, is uh, Andrew's advisor at Harvard University. Uh, she regrets her her absence from the uh, from the conference. Um, so much of what we'll be talking about follows uh, very very closely on what Mariam was uh, speaking about so authoritatively. Uh, so we're, we're very glad to follow her. Um, we think that uh, social media has, has become a, a very important and popular topic in political science and the social sciences in general uh, ever since the so-called Twitter revolution in 2009 in Iran. And of course, uh, after the extensive use of Twitter and Facebook, uh, in uh, 2011. So one branch of the academic research on uh, social media in politics has focused on mobilization. So these, there are these intense moments, marahil mu'ayyina fiha tahtuth fitra kamila, fiha tamdi sinun. Lots changes, lots happens in, in, these, in these short moments. And so part of the research that you see in, in this literature is looking at how to capitalize on these moments, in these urgent moments when, when change can happen, when, uh, when, when protesters can uh, force the, the change of a regime, what can be done from the point of view of Twitter or Facebook to help this kind of activity? So uh, what, what kind of messages should be said? Should I say, should I say Saeed? Um, who should say it? Should it be should I say this from Princeton? Or will this delegitimize the uh, the effort? Should should there be a picture shared? Should there be a video? What timing? Do you do you try to begin the mobilization a week before the protest, a day before, hours before? So these are uh, research questions that people are are pursuing with with uh, with data. 
But what about outside of these uh, very intense moments? What happens the rest of the time? Is there a role for social media the rest of the time? Uh, so we think there is, and it, it, it has to do with cultivating opinion. Okay, this is where the real groundwork of authoritarianism and uh, democracy get done. This is the day-to-day -day basis on which people uh, express their opinions uh, and in which opinions can be formed and shaped and molded and manipulated. Okay, so this is these, these long periods of calm where activists can try to create a narrative, can try to create, uh, develop uh, resonant frames. And uh, so, the, so the work of, uh, for example, our, our colleague uh, Marco and Jones, it looks at, looks at the uh, Bahraini uh, uh, revolution, for example, and you can see even in, in various hashtags where activists are beginning to get some traction, beginning to talk about human, demanding human rights, freedom, and so on, suddenly you'll see a reaction. You'll see uh, Twitter bots spewing sectarian hatred and, and creating divisions among the protesters. So there's a lot of uh, deliberate interference to try to shape uh, opinions. So that literature has tended to focus on polarization so far, that people uh, on their own choose different groups to associate with, choose to follow certain people, and in that way surround themselves with people who agree with them. Um, what, what we're doing is, is kind of broadening the question and trying to say, well, maybe there's polarization, but perhaps there's uh, unification on certain topics, perhaps there's decentralization. Let's see, let's have a look at conversations, political, non-political, uh, um, so at the moment we've we've collected 19 hashtags, 19 conversations, but we're continuing to uh, to generate uh, these data. So we have uh, we've basically developed tools that allow us to download tweets based on any conversation that's that's going on. So today for what we have for you, we have 13 political conversations uh, from from the Gulf, starting at, at the beginning of the uh, of the. Uh, the crisis, and uh, several, uh, four non-political conversations from the Gulf. Also, just to benchmark things, we have a, a political conversation from the USA, and then a, a global hashtag um, that's uh, not political. So what, are, so what are the initial findings? So first of all, one thing that surprised us, we've collected 14 million tweets so far. 90% of them are retweets. Okay, so nine in ten acts of speech on Twitter in, the, in these conversations we've studied, nine in ten acts of speech are just one person repeating what someone else said. So this suggests there's some minority of people that, uh, that others are following. So we actually find that only 28% of participants in Twitter conversations ever say something original, right? Less than three in 10 participants in these Twitter conversations actually say their own thing. Most of them, seven out of 10, are just repeating what other people said. And even among those three in 10 who are saying uh, an, an original speech, uh, the retweet count is very, very skewed. So really, the top 2% of those 28% of people who are saying anything original, the top 2% account for 73% of the whole conversation. They get re those top 2% get retweeted so much that if you add up all their tweets and retweets, the conversation is dominated by, by these guys. So that comes out to 0.6%, so one in 200 participants in, a, in the conversation account for three quarters of, of, of the conversation. So that really changes the strategy that regimes and activists uh, should approach um, when, they're, when they're trying to manipulate public opinion. So instead of going out and trying to convince just anyone to uh, adopt a certain opinion, they can go and focus on this extreme minority of people. In the Gulf, it's something like 2,000, maybe 3,000 people who command the entire narrative. So these guys, these elite 
we call them elite because in the sense of Twitter, just the ones who are followed the most, who are, who are uh, retweeted the most, who are liked the most. Um, we, want to, we want to know, are these elite unified under the uh, project of, uh, uh, under the policy of the regime, or are they uh, uh, polarized with each other? Are they decentralized? It, we sort of, we focus in on, on these elite, okay? And so what we see, here's, here's some suggestive evidence. So we look at uh, one, of, one of the early hashtags in the in Al-Azma al Khalijia, Qatar Tumawwil Al-Irhab, right? So this, this, this hashtag, 80% of the conversation was dominated by this 0.6% of participants in the conversation. And uh, they, were very, they themselves were very consolidated. So it's not like a bunch of independent uh, elites, each one giving his own opinion. No, they're, they're collected. 60, 68%, 60.8% uh, of the traffic on that conversation was coming from a consolidated elite. Irhalia um, Tamim, which uh, was, was, a, was a hashtag in, in, in August, 75% of the conversation dominated by the 0.6%, okay? with again, a consolidation of, of 55%. Now, by, by contrast, in response to, uh, for example, in response to Irhalia Tamim, which, which Andrew will talk about more in a moment, there was a pro Qatari. There was a um, a reaction to Irhalia Tamim uh, in the form of uh, Tamim fi kulli makan and la nusharik fi fi hashtag mzawari. And you'll notice there that also there's a high percentage of elite, but actually lower uh, than the than the anti Qatari uh, hashtags before it. And notice that the elite consolidation is much lower, 36.9%, 34.8%. So this suggests that the pro Qatari hashtags were actually much more decentralized. It was more, in some sense, uh, crowdsourced rather than uh, imposed. Uh, it's less, um, less mutasana or something, less, less, less contrived. Um, and likewise, you can see in the, in the Kuwait earthquake, it's just lots of people uh, reacting to an, a natural disaster, right? So. Uh, there's a lot of people retweeting the elite, 71% of the conversation, but uh, the elite are very decentralized, just 17% consolidation. Um, likewise, Nutalib uh, fil Ahid al Jadid, after uh, uh, Mohammed bin Salman uh, was, was, uh, made the accession to uh, uh, Crown Prince, uh, he, uh, there, 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 was a, there was an outpouring of, of demands, what we'd like in this new era under, under MBS. And that was also very decentralized activity because people were giving up different, uh, you know, different ideas about what they wanted in this new era. So regarding Jeff Lake, so just give you an idea. So Jeff Lake is a is a hashtag from uh, from the American context. So Jeff Lake is an Arizona, uh, a U.S. senator out of Arizona, and in October he very surprisingly and controversially announced that he's not actually going to seek uh, re-election to the Senate because he's so uh, disappointed and disgusted with the, uh, with the Republican Party and the way that it has uh, supported Donald Trump. And so this immediately you know, led to a, a Twitter uh, firestorm. And what we do is we, we apply a kind of standard algorithm that, uh, that exploits modularity maximization to identify different communities of conversation. <laughs> and what you see right here is the polarization in American politics right now. So you get a huge cluster over to the left of pro-Trump people who criticize Senator Jeff Lake for being a traitor and, you know, for, 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 uh, for advocating for fake news and, and so on. Uh, then among the, among the left, <clears throat> there's several different reactions. You have some, the sort of the light green color, who are critical. They say, well, maybe Flake, you know, maybe right now we need leadership. Uh, it's not so good that he decided to quit. Then you have kind of the, the middle left, uh, it was the light blue color. They are anti-Trump, they're pro-Flake. They say, thank you, Senator Flake, for pointing out the hypocrisy of this administration. And then you have this hard left, the dark blue, they're like rejectionist. So they say, uh, we don't like Trump, and this Flake guy, uh, he, 
you know, he's just getting on the bandwagon now, but he's, he's not a real member of the resistance. He's been, he's been serving uh, the Trump administration. So that, that conforms pretty well to our intuition. So now we, now we take the same uh, technology and apply it to uh, a major hashtag in the initial weeks of, of the crisis. Okay, so this, this, this hashtag generated uh, over 4 million tweets, almost uh, half a million participants, okay? And yet, almost half a million participants, but 77% of the traffic can be traced back to 2,275 accounts, okay? Of which uh, just over 1,500 are, are um, we're, we're, we're sort of uh, clustered into, into groups. So part of what we pick up is, is some junk, you can see over in the, in the black on the side there. But basically we get a big, uh, two pro-Saudi camps, one's very hard line, um, very pro-Saudi, anti-Qatari, they say, Sanan wa ta'atan ya Malik Salman. And uh, then, you have, then you have others who are a little more circumspect. They say, okay, we don't like Qatar. Uh, we don't like the Qatari government, but we respect the Qatari people. Uh, then, we have, then we have the pro-Qatari uh, reaction down in, in red, uh, which was red because of the uh, flag color. Um, and then the hardline pro-Qatar, which is like, you know, uh, almost takes on like a religious language of, of, of supporting Qatar and opposing Saudi. Uh, interestingly, we also get this community over to the bottom left uh, that it's a, it's, a small, it's a small community, but it's very interesting because they all say uh, the media is manipulating uh, this situation and they don't trust any of the news coming. And some of them even say, ah, you know, the Gulf, it's, it's, it's getting what it deserves or something. And likewise, this is a segue to, to Andrew's part of the presentation. Um, uh, is, a, is a hashtag that trended in, in, in late August. You have about a quarter million tweets coming from just 50,000 participants. Again, 75% of the traffic is driven by 238 accounts. So when you read what's coming from this conversation, you are not reading what 200, you're not reading what 50,000 people think. You're not reading what the region thinks. You're reading what 238 handles think or were told to think. Um, and what you, what you find there is basically everybody's against Tamim, but it's, it's different, uh, different flavors uh, of, of, of extremism. Okay. Uh, just in the interest of time, my Arabic is a little faster than my English, even if it might not be as good as my English. So I'm going to switch over for anyone who needs that. طبعا أيضا من من باب المساواة لزملائنا ناطقين باللغة العربية راح كم من باللغة العربية عشان نعطي لكم شوية استراحة من الإنجليزي ومن التر من الترجمة. فطيب فسؤال هو من من الأستاذ مريم الخاطر يعني من هو الذي يشجع هذه الأفكار وهذه الاختيارات التي نراها في المجال الأردني والمجتمعي؟ And when we put it in the social social media context, there is one name. We don't say uh, 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 there is one reason, uh, and uh, there is a name that has been repeated, and this name is Saud Al Qahtani. Maybe some people know him better than myself, but this name uh, was uh, repeated uh, uh, and came uh, through tweets. Saud Al Qahtani, he's advisor of the. Uh, Royal uh, Court in uh, Riyadh, uh, and uh, he's a researcher, uh, and uh, there are uh, some indications uh, um, he was uh, looking uh, for tools uh, to uh, take information from social media and uh, and uh, he used to present himself as the voice of uh, the uh, Saudi government. Uh, and uh, in this uh, presentation, uh, you know, this tweet says uh, that you think I speak. Uh, 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 by myself, I'm an employee and uh, executor for or the orders of. Uh, uh, his uh, uh, Royal uh, uh, Highness um, Saud Al-Qahtani uh, was uh, looking, emerging, uh, looking uh, 
you know, monitoring uh, accounts uh, or monitoring fake accounts uh, to uh, to uh, also market and uh, for these uh, hashtags. And during uh, research, our research, we looked, uh, we found uh, uh, indications. You know, we have a hashtag uh, leave the meme and started in uh, uh, August 21st. Uh, that uh, hashtag started to rise, and there is there was an anti hashtag uh, or pro uh, uh, Qatar hashtag everywhere, and we see it everywhere. And there is only one tweet uh, from um, Mr. Saud Al Qahtani. The tweet says uh, the uh, first trend uh, in Qatar is uh, uh, move, uh, uh, leave Tamim. What's strange is when we look into the names, there are two names. We understand that this is uh, probably coming out from Qatar, but the first name, uh, this that's the name for it, uh, and uh, that's uh, uh, this is the second account. Uh, we, uh, we assume that they are not in Doha, and uh, after uh, these uh, tweets coming from Saud Al Qahtani, the hashtag uh, uh, Leave Tamim, there is a big uh, spike in uh, the green color that you see there, and there is another one. Uh, we see that uh, Saud Al Qahtani had that tweet initially and he was advocating for it so we have we must start uh, an a counter hashtag and uh, there was uh, a hashtag um, we will not participate in a fake hashtag that's another hashtag and at the same time uh, we had the impression that there are limits uh, uh, at the end of the day uh, the ability for any regime, any government to uh, advocate for certain uh, ideas. You know, we see hashtag uh, tweets and uh, and uh, retweets uh, for uh, you know for the uh, for Qatar for the hashtag Qatar funds uh, terror. There were mentioning for certain names and groups, and not in all the tweets, but some of them. Uh, we see that uh, certain names that uh, uh, did not uh, were not didn't come in a. a Retweets, for example, uh, here where we have the circles, uh, uh, we have Hamas and the Houthis, uh, despite they were uh, tweets, uh, uh, they were not mentioned in the retweets. And what we think, uh, and we uh, probably need uh, further uh, research, there was no uh, probably uh, probably these uh, groups did not uh, enjoy uh, the popular appeal. Meaning that uh, Qatar uh, uh, funds terror, terror when it comes to the hashtag. And we have here uh, statistics uh, to uh, presented in a more rational uh, context. We wanted to make sure that uh, the percentage that we have uh, seen was uh, real and it was not merely statistics. So what, uh, we see that these uh, red uh, dots and uh, uh, it uh, assures us that uh, in most uh, cases uh, that uh, the, these uh, names did not attract a lot of attention. So, uh, as uh, Alexei has mentioned, we uh, have to do uh, more research uh, in this context, and uh, hopefully, we will uh, new questions will be emerging, and we will be will be benefits uh, benefiting from them. Thank you so much uh, for uh, Andrew and uh, Alexi, and uh, it's clearly um, it's clear that uh, when uh, the similarity between uh, your paper and uh, uh, Professor Maryam, you know the common points. Uh, in order to um, uh, vilify uh, Qatar and uh, the role of uh, what is uh, known as uh, elites uh, in uh, during on these uh, platforms uh, and how uh, these uh, platforms and these tweets were uh, misused and uh, many figures were presented. Uh, uh, 
and uh, through their research. Uh, you know, the third uh, uh, paper that we will be concluding uh, with the, before opening uh, the uh, questions, we will have Mr. Abdurrahman Muhammad uh, Al Shami. Uh, he worked uh, a professor in uh, Sana'a uh, University 2012-2014, uh, and he was the dean of uh, uh, TV presenting, and he uh, uh, had uh, the uh, College of Fine Arts in Hudayda, and he was. Uh, uh, in charge uh, of uh, uh, he's uh, Sharq al Awsat Middle East uh, Arabic version and uh, he has a PhD from Al Azhar and he's a member of many uh, academic uh, societies uh, including uh, Arab uh, American Society and he published more than 20 uh, research articles. Mr. Abdurrahman will be discussing the role of uh, Qatari journalists uh, uh, during uh, the uh, crisis. Shukran Gazilan, wa asad Allah wa sa'akum bi kullu khair. Bidayatan, al shukr mawsul lil merkaz al arabi li ibahat al fursalana li hadhi al musharaka wa al ilqiqa bi hadhi al musharaka. I'd like to thank the uh, Arab Center for uh, uh, this opportunity. I believe these two papers have uh, enhanced our concerns uh, when it comes uh, to social uh, media and uh, the huge amount of uh, effort uh, exerted in order to manipulate uh, uh, these uh, uh, platforms. Uh, you know, the users of these uh, platforms are youth and uh, young generations. That's why the, the matter makes uh, uh, that uh, these operations is highly dangerous and it's really important uh, uh, for this uh, issue to be discussed uh, because the social media, as we heard, is uh, the crisis is there, taking and shaping up there. Of course, journalists and all the people, uh, influential uh, people and uh, uh, powers uh, uh, present at all uh, uh, platforms, but they are, uh, cannot be compared with the popular presence uh, from all the sector of uh, sector of uh, sectors of society uh, in, uh, you know my studies can be a complementary one you know uh, faced with this uh, uh, this amount uh, we have uh, for example a, a minister of uh, uh, publicity or uh, campaigning for so the journalists that I'm trying to uh, discuss their role is presented uh, by the by follows you know faced by this uh, big amount of uh, statistics um, we wonder uh, what are the means to face these hashtags that try to manipulate awareness when it comes to the role of uh, Qatari journalists in the in social media you know the dilemma of uh, social media when it comes uh, to its uh, contextual uh, content uh, studies. It's similar to writing on the walls. So they have no memories. Uh, each tweet or each post uh, is... Uh, um, disappears and uh, social media uh, doesn't uh, social media don't allow uh, users to recall these uh, uh, tweets so um, monitoring uh, these uh, contexts in this uh, this stage is really important for research and study. Uh, we have a presentation. We will introduce uh, the study and uh, what is the aim, what are the aims of this study and what are the uh, procedures for uh, this study and the samples. And uh, I'll be discussing uh, the subjects that I'm trying uh, to uh, uh, carry uh, uh, research on so uh, subject of uh, study is trying to find uh, how uh, the Qatari uh, journalists use social media in uh, their efforts uh, uh, media efforts uh, to uh, face uh, blockade you know that comes during their roles uh, as professional uh, journalists and they are they have formed an elite uh, 
um, journalism uh, uh, or journalist uh, uh, they who play uh, who plays a major role i'm trying uh, to track uh, what are the addition that they are uh, making or the difference that they are making through using social media meaning that uh, their roles are they a complementary one uh, in social media or traditional uh, media or it's probably a combination and what are the addition that they uh, made these are some of the uh, aims uh, we uh, find out uh, the main uh, uh, the usage of uh, uh, the way, the means that the uh, Qatari journalists are using and also uh, revealing the main subjects that have been covered and the targets that uh, these journalists uh, uh, have tried to achieve and uh, what kind of integration between the new and old methods and uh, also uh, monitoring the interactions in this uh, context uh, my study is uh, trying uh, to uh, study the means uh, because rather than the content uh, because uh, the content needs uh, electronic tools that enable uh, me to uh, count the number of uh, tweets and the number of uh, retweets and the comments and this is uh, beyond the ability of uh, the researchers uh, of the researcher and this is probably one of the problems uh, that uh, we have uh, to think in uh, such a uh, context. You know, uh, what uh, uh, social media has been around for a while, but our tools uh, for research to analyze uh, contact when we're talking about the contact of millions and millions of messages. So there is no way to analyze these, uh, this contact in a, a traditional uh, means. We, what I'm saying that we need to think about finding uh, new tools and new centers centers in studying uh, social media and monitor what's taking place there. The sample that I've uh, uh, is, uh, studying uh, or analyzing the work of uh, uh, the uh, of, um, prominent uh, Qatari journalists who are very active in uh, social uh, media. Uh, this is a sample and uh, I have tried uh, here I, um, I uh, targeted uh, the journalists who enjoy uh, the most uh, number of uh, followers. Uh, what uh, my, my the results uh, that I uh, found was uh, the means of uh, communication uh, can be varied. You know there are. Uh, uh, I'm trying, uh, I've tried uh, to uh, find the additional role uh, that the journalists uh, carry uh, out. These uh, uh, networks, you know, um, for the public, it's a platform, a private uh, platform to advertise, uh, to personal advertise for Qatari journalists and uh, other journalists. It's an additional, uh, it's an important addition because it's a complementary role uh, when it comes to the relation of uh, uh, new uh, uh, communication methods with the old communication method because these social media is considered to be uh, complementary they play a complementary uh, role uh, to the old uh, means of communication for example a, a journalist who is taking part uh, uh, in uh, uh, a symposium in a seminar he would announce in advance on a social media that he will be taking part uh, in that discussion or the seminar. You know, we have journalists who advertise about what is broadcast uh, uh, in uh, real time. So it's a way to uh, come to, prov to to also to announce about a certain event. Uh, it could be also um, the link for that event uh, could be placed there. And um, the contact of the net, if we look for the uh, content of this uh, network, we can, uh, it's a combination of uh, um, tweets uh, and uh, supported by multimedia languages uh, um, through hashtags, uh, um, which is very easy to find and to track. And uh, we probably find a video that is carefully selected and it is uh, suitable for uh, the uh, public of youth, uh, very short one, which is uh, not more than one minute, and uh, it is carefully selected from the whole episode. Sometimes uh, um, uh, emojis used, sometimes uh, drawing uh, 
used and it's probably the interactivity as well and that's the secret uh, of uh, uh, the popularity of uh, social media so when we look into context it's a combination of old and new in a, on a modern uh, platform uh, that plays an integral uh, they play integral roles I would like to cover quickly about the main uh, context and we can hear uh, we can hear her see the integration between old and new there are certain things that have been repeated the difficulty of uh, analyzing content uh, you know uh, before Twitter doubled the, the number of uh, uh, characters uh, these uh, messages uh, uh, sometimes it's really hard uh, it's really hard to analyze them the main subject that uh, we can mention here through the functions uh, focused on importance of uh, um, for example enhancing uh, national unity and uh, rejecting uh, uh, tribal and uh, racial uh, trends uh, and uh, there were hashtags we are all uh, tamim and uh, our tribe is Qatar, for example. Same content uh, uh, took us uh, to the um, different uh, other, you know, for a uh, traditional uh, uh, role of media presented by us, well, is uh, to link the uh, sectors of uh, society. So, you know, during uh, crisis time and faced by a major uh, crisis, is uh, the uh, importance of the unity of uh, society is very important. So it's very important, as we heard, that uh, uh, Qatari journalists uh, uh, are playing an important role, you know, to clarify and to correct many fake uh, uh, news, you know. Uh, uh, there is, uh, for example, uh, there is a news that uh, Saudi Arabia has uh, issued a role uh, to target uh, beggars. Uh, so, uh, so there was uh, this news: 1,800 uh, were Qataris. So, it's uh, this is a false claim, and uh, no. Um, and it's far away from smartness, even like, uh, uh, you know, uh, this is false uh, news uh, which were uh, uh, made fun of, you know, um, similar to the claims uh, that came that Qatar is uh, uh, deploying magic or the black magic and uh, sorcery. So uh, the um, the role of uh, journalists was uh, very, still was and is still very important to reveal and uh, to uh, uh, also to um, reveal the truth about uh, these uh, false and uh, fake news. You know, sometimes uh, there uh, this is a tweet uh, for uh, Mr. Sadak Al Amari talking about the Qatari uh, militaries. Once you are saying that. Uh, uh, Qatari uh, army is uh, uh, formed uh, of uh, um, mercenaries and now you say that 67% uh, are from uh, Murra, tribe of uh, Murra. So, uh, so uh, the the Qatari um, Qatari uh, journalists were able to recall all the tweets in order to show the contradiction um, that's taking place. This is another uh, a tweet, you know, facing the inciting. Uh, uh, discourse. One of the roles of uh, uh, Qatari journalists is to uh, disclose uh, and uh, to clarify false uh, news. Probably the worst thing is uh, uh, we are probably uh, facing uh, our electronic uh, uh, cells. Uh, it's a matter that actually um, maybe we have, it's okay to have uh, political uh, disagreements, uh, but uh, to uh, reach uh, to the um, point for certain elites uh, to uh, smear uh, campaign and uh, to attack, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, people, uh, and uh, there, and you know, we have the electronic arms, electronic uh, flies, and using uh, them in this uh, uh, 
um, unacceptable uh, way, like smearing, vilifying. Uh, it's not uh, acceptable, and it's not uh, it's not uh, acceptable uh, when, we, especially uh, in taking into context of our uh, morals and our religion, and uh, based on our reference, uh, which are. Uh, coming uh, from our religion. So many subjects that uh, emerge during uh, the study, we can uh, divide it into local uh, environment and international environment, meaning that uh, journalists were not away from uh, happening in their a local environment and uh, the international environment and uh, uh, you know what also the uh, the standard language was uh, used and sometimes the local dialect was used also uh, we have many platforms not only one platform and one of the uh, one of the difficulties was to support uh, the uh, freedom of expression. Uh, also, all the arts of journalism was used using uh, uh, satire, and uh, also uh, the integration between uh, the uh, the uh, new media and the old media, and enhancing the traditional media. And uh, at the end, the writing is still the. Um, probably the master of content, and uh, then we have a price that uh, uh, journalists pay as uh, for being present at uh, that uh, these platforms. Sometimes they are attacked, uh, they are uh, they are uh, vilified, smeared, but it is uh, a price uh, that's worth uh, paying. I feel uh, to be there. And thank you very much for Dr. Ashami and the nice presentation, and especially the different contents included in the tweets and the other platforms of the new media. And uh, of course, the misuse, I had rather say, and the campaigns of vilification, and the unethical practices sometimes. We have about 15 minutes left for some questions and answers. Uh, thank you. My name is Amina Al-Hijri. I work for a Cisco. My question to Ms. Maryam and the propaganda used against Qatar and through different uh, social media platforms and they try to uh, depict Qatar as a country supporting terrorism. This uh, scenario is, in fact, not new. It's been used in the past against other countries. And my question is, uh, in your uh, research paper, have you come across uh, other countries who were subjected to similar campaigns? And if so, were the propaganda campaigns successful? This is another lecture, it seems, not just a question. I think we get the questions first and then we give a few minutes to each panelist, Dr. Khalid Al-Jabr. The papers are very nice if we compare them to yesterday's papers. Uh, Today's papers are more practical. They have facts and, uh, uh, facts and figures. We thank you, Ms. Maryam, and our friends from Harvard. Have you used 
have have have, have you used correlation? I did not see any percentages. You didn't give me 60%, 70% for or against it. And all the programs you used, is it the same, the one used by Ms. Maryam or different? Shukran, Abdullah Al-Kindi from Oman. Abdullah Al-Kindi from Oman. Alex and Andrew, um, when you said that um, retweeting is uh, uh, more than or about 90% of them, I mean, from the total uh, tweets we have, and uh, the real tweets are only 10%. This is in our case here in the, in the Gulf and during the Gulf crisis. What about the percentage worldwide? Is it also in another incident or in another events? Do we have, I mean, the same percentage? Because it's, it's, it should be also considered and studied. Uh, or this is the case here in, in, in the Gulf or in the Arab world. I, I would like to hear from you if you have some I mean, similar cases and you have percentage like this. Thank you. حسن جار من الكويت حسن سؤالي يعني الكويت. استخدمت كلمة الجيوش الإلكترونية من وجه السؤال سؤال لأخت مريم والأخبار ما كوستن تو مريم and our friends from Harvard they used electronic the term electronic armies هناك مرحلة تستخدم فيها if there is really a stage whereby social social uh, the, the social media is used in different ways, but uh, in this particular way that was alluded to in the in this in these presentations, do you think in the future we will have attempts by governments to start armies, electronic armies, to support their their regular armies, and how much money will we need for that? And all the financial costs, we know Gulf countries are very rich countries, and a small number of people can control people. Do you expect that the budgets will be allocated to institutionalize these electronic armies? We are running out of time. Please make your questions brief. My question to Ms. Merriam and Andrew Alexi. And uh, I saw some interpretations of tweets. Uh, have, has this been done? on any theory, on hate speech or anything? And, uh, or are they just uh, observations by the researchers themselves? Zainab Hajjar, my question to Maryam. You said on the 5th of March, the number of tweets reached uh, 700 and something. Why on this particular day? My question to Alexander and Andrew, يبدو أن وسائل التواصل الاجتماعي أداة خطيرة. What can we do to minimize the impact? Hamid Abdullah from Kuwait University. My question is to Maryam. Can we, through these figures and conclusions, uh, can gauge the level of support by the Saudi people of their... Uh, we know if a, if a person expresses sympathy with Qatar, he will end up being imprisoned for three years. And also this can apply to Qatari uh, tweeters. If they if they show any attitude towards their, their countries, 
position in the crisis. Last two questions. I said that not from a man. My questions about the elites, the, the statistics do not show uh, are the street as writers, journalists, do they belong to the uh, elite? Are they famous artists, performers, poets, or just ordinary people? Last question, please. Saif al Ma'amari, thank you for all your presentations. The questions show that the papers were very informative and important. Uh, Maryam, we did not see uh, anything from the counter propaganda by Qatar. The, all the hashtags, uh, where were they being? Uh, manipulated are they from Qatar or originated somewhere else and also Dr. Abdul Rahman when you analyze the content for Qatari journalists I want to know what methodology you followed and you chose a certain number of journalists with a large number of followers is this uh, as this standard or uh, a criterion for your methodology enough, especially for the kind of conclusions you came up with. Now you have. Um, Amina's question on propaganda. Was, uh, was the strategy used uh, against other countries? Thank you for the question. I talked about Bush Jr. when he launched his war on terrorism after the events of 9-11. He launched this concept when he said that our war in the United States, that is, was the, from an, an open struggle into a specific uh, war, and that is the war against terrorism, although they've never given us any definition of terrorism until now, and despite the many criticisms, who we do not know who the enemy is. We still do not know who is the enemy is to fight them. Um, we, are we fighting windmills or what? Now, after all these crises, a, a, and a brother can use that against his own brother, similarly to what happened in the Gulf. It moved from fighting an individual like bin Laden into a group like Al-Qaeda, then ISIS, and it can be expanded into Salafism, Wahhabism, until ultimately it can be Islam itself. And it's, it is rather a vague definition or concept until now. And for this reason, NATO uh, defense ministers uh, called for uh, raising the level of the electronic sphere into an operational level, similarly to other. But somebody asked about uh, 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 cyber troops or, uh, or there are such. Uh, uh, troops, in fact, a recent study by Oxford University, Howard and others studied uh, some countries, including some Arab countries, 
they concluded at least two countries from the Gulf countries have organized uh, electronic armies like the Salman army in Saudi Arabia, which is like uh, a cyber uh, army, electronic army, electronic troops, and uh, they used uh, and, uh, and maybe uh, like similarly to the figure we had in Arab history, a lady with very strong eyesight and vision called Zarqa al Yamama. Her people used to use her to, as a way of means of reconnaissance against the enemy. One of the ministers of the defense ministers in NATO called for a redefinition of cyber warfare and electronic warfare, and they wanted to criminalize that and, uh, and deal with it similarly like any form of uh, act of war, whether through uh, uh, using air forces or land forces or whatever. Bahrain also. Bahrain and Saudi Arabia both use this concept of cyber troops. And the paper also revealed that uh, some uh, Gulf countries use it to put bad spams and others to influence public opinion and gag public opinion rather. And there are different definitions because although spams and bats are different, they are automatic and non automatic. There are some which are paid for, etc., which are not. And the research concluded that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that Israel also uses. That uh, and in Arab countries, uh, Saudi Arabia is the only country mentioned the study to uh, use spam by way of uh, uh, using that against the public opinion to deviate its attention. Howard is one of the most important people in, in this field of study at Oxford. Please be brief, we don't have time. You talked about methodology. This is very important. When I, I mentioned the previous uh, propaganda campaign in the 2014 and 2017 in different uh, platforms, whether we talk about uh, diplomacy or uh, social media or others. And I explained that through the sample for my research, Twitter, as some mentioned already, cannot allow you to recall from the time, the main timeline and the archives. For example, I put a hashtag, a, a previous hashtag, but Twitter allows you access to archives for one week prior, but not more than that. So therefore, you must go back to the historic uh, archive and uh, and uh, the tweets which came into existence in the time of uh, peace uh, when the crisis was solved. And this hashtag uh, was recalled through the API programming interface uh, and DECOHOS, which also allows uh, allows the researcher to get 10% uh, 
of the tweets in the live timeline at that time and the sample is taken through the fire hose and in a scientific and methodological way you get a random sample of 10 percent and used as a sample for research and then uh, to make sure like uh, where these uh, accounts created randomly or what uh, there are certain dimensions and special techniques uh, used by computer engineers and uh, like it was mentioned collaboration through IT uh, I, I asked the help of IT specialists. Now I'm more involved with this technology because I communicated with computer engineers to first to know how to filter this uh, this uh, tweet. I got two million uh, tweets. Then I analyzed them. And I put annotators, examiners, or who test the hashtags. <laughs> we are having another lecture, it seems. Uh, I was asked uh, whether or not uh, you identified the real uh, tweeters. I, I, have, I have a name, a list. And uh, we time time does not allow me, of course, to go through all these things. Uh, so in the end, uh, we have to decide what's the aim of the study. And uh, my research uh, monitored all these uh, accounts, whether fake news or uh, proper accounts. Uh, and we know who was active and thank you very much thank you thank you and i was asked about uh, uh, measuring or gauging the support levels of uh, the saudi saudi uh, public opinion thank you very much <laughs> Thank you very much for the questions. Uh, since we're running out of time, we'll also uh, very happily answer these questions uh, after the session in, in, in person. Um, just trying to remember the questions, but uh, uh, sir, you were, you were asking about the uh, rate at, w at which uh, retweeting happens uh, in different parts of the world. This is a very good question. So at the moment, our sample is is small. So we have 14 million tweets, but we only have 19 conversations. And so far, we've only looked at two that originated outside of the Gulf. So it would be hard to say. For the American uh, conversation that I was showing uh, regarding Senator Jeff Flake, uh, the retweeting rate was comparable to what we were seeing with uh, Qatar. Um, so it's not. It's not a specifically a, a Gulf uh, phenomenon. I think the retweeting rate is less on hashtags that are overtly crowdsourced. So, for example, one of the hashtags we looked at is uh, Me Too, which had to do with um, sexual uh, harassment of, of women. And so, uh, women around the world were were reporting their own uh, experiences of harassment, and so they were not they were retweeting less. Because they were, you know, the, the, the nature of the hashtag was was inviting uh, people to provide their own original uh, contributions. So it, it kind of varies by topic. Thank you very much for your questions. Uh, for the question of methodology, first of all, uh, we, we try to uh, collect the largest possible of hashtags to see whether 
if they are the usual ordinary or something is under current uh, happening and also the difference what I know about what Miss Maryam has said we do not we do not the ability to use the fire hose with the API we we may use free channels we cannot pay for maybe we have a network for 10 days I can get tweets during these 10 days but but we cannot for example monitor what happens in Kuwait or Riyadh all at the same time no also the theory we can talk about this later some some theories uh, which uh, discuss the question of uh, polarization on social media and uh, some relate to studying public opinion or maybe the United States in particular which may require some amendment we then we can determine who's the elite and who should we follow and monitor also between who is uh, uh, the, uh, ethnographically who belongs to the elite who is who belongs to the masses and maybe through that we can see who who are uh, who belong to which sect? Thank you very much. When you try to study what's said on the social media, you can do that uh, quantitatively. The, the computer can you do that? How many likes? How many hits? How many this and that? As for using the programs for analysis this is different so we can use the traditional uh, methods of uh, analysis and solid groups and then you try to read that to conclude what what is uh, you moved from what is quantitative to what is qualitative i was trying to gauge what role the scattery journalists were playing through the one minute please and you asked me about Qatari propaganda this is very important it will be the subject for future research it was not the aim in this current paper i will make a comparison in the future i hope on the first of march i just want to I just want to show her one slide. Uh, so this is a statistic on the 5th of March. And uh, there was this peak on the 5th of March, 2017. The 5th of March, you see. These are the electronic armies, they are not real. Uh, I cannot go into much detail here, but uh, let's see the highest trends by the electronic armies. You will see uh, the concurrence in time when the hashtag uh, military coup in Qatar, for example, in the, in the timeline in Twitter, they were originating in Egypt at that time. And, and this was in April before Washington uh, summit when Gates attended on the 23rd, the night of the... So this hashtag was inciting against Qatar before the uh, uh, hacking. We go back to the hotel for lunch and coming back. <coughs> coming back to the center. Thank you very much. Thank you.